All right, so um, what do we have here today? Uh, I bet you're all surprised to see a gold dollar out. Um, I'm like Joe Sarah, 1K. Um, some of you are probably like, Keith, uh, you don't like gold dollars. Why? You know, well, uh, yeah, I don't like gold dollars, but, you know, life isn't always about what I like. Um, people buy them. People hone them. People use them. Um, I've watched some videos um, about that here on YouTube and you know, um, one thing I've learned is, you know, you can always learn something from somebody. So, you know, um, I, I've honed a bunch of these, it's like uh, really a bunch. And um, no, I don't like them. They're not my favorite razors. Uh, <clears throat> I don't find that the steel is all that great. And I don't find that it holds an edge as long as I want it to. And, you know, um, it'll work. You know, I, I, I can get by with it if I needed to. If this was the only razor out there, then that would be that. Um, <clears throat> I've traveled with them. I've taken one upstate with me. Um, you know, it, it served fine uh, for what I needed it to do. Um, no matter what, you know, it's a gold dollar, you know. Um, you know, dress it up, tweak it out, do all kinds of grinding on it and put fancy scales on it, but it's still a gold dollar. You know, it's like, you know, putting a tuxedo on a monkey. At the end of the day, it's still a freaking monkey. So um, I tend to just kind of leave them like this. Uh, I don't get into all of that fancy work. Um, this one's actually been worked on a little bit. I'm time shifting on this video. I'm shooting the beginning of uh, this part uh, <clears throat> after I've done some of the work already. And uh, so I'll be shifting to that in a sec. But I just wanted to do a quick intro and uh, start the video off. So, uh, yeah, so I'm going to do this video, uh, my take on uh, what to do with a gold dollar, if you're so inclined. And, um, you know, and hopefully something I say in the course of this video will uh, help one person out down the road somewhere, you know, hopefully. Anyway, so stay tuned. Alright, so I'm um, going to dress down the heel. I got safety glasses on. Do not do this without safety glasses. You should be wearing gloves. Also, I don't. It's stupid. I admit it. This is a Dremel-like object. I'm working on this area here. Got the edge tape. this might need some more work but 
<clears throat> I got to check it out on the bench first. And we're uh, back out here at the sink, and we're going to throw this lovely <coughs> razor-shaped object, also known as gold dollar, um, on this 1K. Yeah, I got this new piece of rubber down here. I, I don't know if I like it, to be honest. It's, it's like freaking weird. It's, no, screw this. I'm not into that thing. Um, I just use one of my regular pads. And, uh, yeah, someone sent me that to check out. It's some kind of rubber from Japan. And, uh, the bumps are too far apart. Make me happy. Anyway. The goal here is to get some kind of scratch pattern on the bevel and the spine so I can see what the hell is going on. See if enough parts of the grind. <laughs> you know, manufacturing of uh, the razor were like wacky, but like all in some kind of synchronicity. Um, could wind up to be, you know, <coughs> excuse me, working situation. You know, um, when I say working, I mean, you know, it'll be functional. You know, uh, I just did some basic sanding on this thing to Get rid of my Dremel marks. Like I said earlier, I don't believe really in doing a, a lot of work to these razors because, well, I just don't have a lot of love for them. And if I'm going to put work in on a razor, it's going to be, you know, on a piece of history. I'm going to muscle this a little bit. Um, let me move this water right there. Yeah, you know, that's in the way. All right, I want to do a roll, but I want to put a little. Yeah, about that. What I was doing was uh, a little extra feel. This area up at the heel is going to be suspect until I give it a clean bill of health. Um, oh yeah, while well, uh, I'm sitting here grinding away on the 1K, um, I know someone's going to ask, and uh, so I figured I'd mention it now. The reason you didn't see me like you know dunking the blade in water when I was like grinding the heel down is because it never really got hot. You notice proximity of my fingers and judging the temperature and never really got up there. So, <clears throat> if I was doing some heavy grinding, like, you know, on my grinding wheel, which is not what I was doing, but if I was, then I would have had a glass of ice water sitting there to dunk the blade into so I don't blow the temper. Now, if you're not practiced, <clears throat> might make sense to just have some ice water around chill the blade down anyway until you like you learn a little bit yeah I'm putting some added pressure down here at the shank it's something I didn't really enjoy the feel of and now it's gone No matter what, there's going to be like, you know, a ridiculous amount of work to do on this. 
and eh, not ridiculous, but um, gold dollar factory bevels are usually worthless. Yeah, you know, I tell you, I'm not, I don't have a great hit on the bell, but it's fairly even. As suspected, okay, maybe you can see this, let me see, if I can catch it in the light. I'll take a photo of it. And you can see there, not really. Um, the blade, the spine is riding on the stone to about here and here forward. But this center area here is blank. I'm not getting a hit. But I have a hit on the blade. So. All right, well, I've stepped away from the honing um, for uh, a little bit for a couple of reasons. Um, one, because I wanted to go over this, um, this part, because people make a big deal out of it. And, you know, I, I, I feel it needs a little bit of explanation, you know. So uh, this is the blade I'm, uh, I'm working on, you know, and... Um, in the middle of honing, now I have a flat established here on the spine, and um, you know I have a, a hit uh, across the entire bevel. So I've established the beginning of my edge, and you know uh, what I want to know now at this point is, um, you know, and this for me, what I want to know is, is where's my bevel angle at? You know, some people make a big deal out of it. Some people don't make a big deal out of it. I don't necessarily make a big deal out of it most of the time. Um, it's really almost impossible to figure out by looking at it. So you got to measure. So, you know, I got my caliper out and so on and so forth. Um, so what I want to do is uh, I, I just, for me, I want to check and see like where I'm at with this. And um, it, it'll be my baseline. It'll be my starting point. Uh, when you're measuring, you're you know, you, for your bevel angle, you're taking a measurement, you know, from here to uh, basically, you know, the tip of uh, your cutting edge. But you don't have any spine wear here, okay? So you're going to get a read on the max diameter of this because, you know, basically it's round, right? Um, and it'll be close, but it's not going to be exact and... It's going to be some other stuff that you don't know about that's going to show up from honing that, you know, whatever. Now, <clears throat> you don't have to do this. You know, uh, a lot of this, you know, makes people crazy. Uh, there's a theory that uh, the perfect bevel angle is 17 degrees, and that's complete bullshit. All right. Um, any given razor can shave better or worse at any given angle. Uh, the safe thing to say is that if you're between 15 and 19, I would say you're in the ballpark. Thinner, narrower uh, bevel angles are probably going to shave better most of the time. Um, there's a lot of factors into all of this. You know, um, I will say this. Uh, any blade that's over 20 usually shaves like a dog. And a lot of razors that are under 15, the edge doesn't hold. All right, because the steel is just not good enough. A lot, not all. All right, so don't go nuts on me there. Um, there's some razors I've had down to 13, and they were fine. I read once somebody had it down to 8. I think he blew his measuring, but, you know, that's another story. Anyway, so this is a raw, undone gold dollar. <clears throat> One of many I have in a box just for whatever when I get bored. Um, so that's that. Now, here's the one I've been working on. And uh, I've already done a series of measurements, and uh, I'm, throw I'm tossing them out the window because they become irrelevant at this point. And the reason for that is I'm going to insert some photos. Um, see the shiny piece right here? All right, you'll notice that it's not shiny there, but it picks up shiny over there. Right? 
you don't really get a flat all the way across. Right here, this section on this razor is uh, untouched by the stone so far. If I keep honing, I'll get there. But as I keep honing, I'm also bringing the edge closer to the top of the spine. So, you know, theoretically the angle um, stays constant. What's going to happen is, is I'm going to put more pressure on the spine than I would normally do. So I can decrease this at a faster rate than I decrease this dimension. Now, <clears throat> you know, when you measure, and I'm going to show this with some photos, you measure from the top of the spine wire to the cutting edge. That becomes your dimension for blade width. All right, if you measure from here, the top of the spine, to the apex, you're going to get a bad reading. All right? So, uh, and you know, you plug the stuff into a uh, bevel angle calculator, you know, and you come up with some numbers. And you don't have to freak. some numbers and you don't have to freak out you know if it comes out at like you know 1920 hone the razor shave with the razor do you like to shave yes no yes leave it no why was it honed right okay you honed it as best as you could bevel angles too thick you think dropping you know the uh, bevel angle down a little bit uh, might be something you want to do then you got to figure out how to do that you have to figure out if you want to go through the effort of making this dimension thinner while keeping this dimension constant. Now you're getting into some tricky uh, work. And, you know, I, I really suggest trying the edge first the way it is out of the gate. <clears throat> I think most people who don't even know much about bevel angle are going to be fine. Once you start getting into it, me... I'm into it, so I start noticing. I like a very, very, very thin edge width. I like a very, very steep bevel angle. I would like to get this down to 16 myself if I was going to enjoy it. But here's the thing. It's a $3 razor. Uh, that's not really going to keep the edge the way I want it to, especially when I get it down uh, that far. So it's kind of a self-defeating proposition, you know, for me. For somebody else, fine. I know there's a guy in a shaving form. Every time he shaves, uh, he puts his uh, gold dollar on a paddle strap that's charged with a uh, diamond. He swears by this process and he loves it. You know, good for him. I don't want to do that. You know, that to me is like taking up slack that I, I would rather just have the better razor <laughs> and, and roll with that. You know, but um, that's not what this is about. This is just about, you know, picking up your $3 uh, Chinese razor honing it, shaving it, and, you know, getting some honing time in and having some fun. So, basically, <clears throat> I'm telling you, most people, um, if I hone this up and I sent it to somebody, they're going to be like, wow, that shave's really good, um, and, and life will be fine. It's only when you start getting into, like, being particular and uh, you learn more and you become more, uh, you know, selective, I guess is the word. Anyway, the hit on the blade, bevel is continuous stem to stern um, i wrote it up on the end here like i normally do on these things just to like <clears throat> ensure that everything is like you know going to be grinded down the way i want it to let me take a look at this side now same here pretty much even steven going across not as perfect as the other side, but surprisingly okay. Um, you 
hit on the spine on this side is better. I'm only really missing right there, like that spot under my pinky. The rest of it's hitting. So, <clears throat> I have a choice. Do when I put this on a coarser stone, speed up this initial process of grind until I get the geometry straight. Or do I live with the basic speed, which, you know, is nothing to sneeze at, of the uh, venerable 1K Chaucer? Which way you want to go? Now, a lot of people will tell you, that's what coarser stones are for. And there is truth to that. But, 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 always a but. Um, sometimes using the coarser stone creates a situation that's not really um, what you want. Here, I'm not that far off. Okay, I need some pressure. Could use some speed. Not taking out chips. 400, which, you know, is right here. I got it, right? That's my 400. Put it out just in case, because I wasn't sure. Um, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. Uh, that would, like, get the job done a lot faster. But it would also leave me with a lot of work on the 1K to clean it up. Now, <clears throat> having worked those two stones side by side, one following the other 1K400 zone, and maybe toggling back and forth sometimes, I can tell you that cleaning up the 400, the scratches from the 400, <sighs> man, that's work. Might actually turn out to be the same amount of work as what I got to do here. I'm not really reading any warps in the blade, which for a gold dollar is, you know, for me, surprising. <clears throat> you know, um, when I first started horn and razors, uh, gold dollars weren't that popular. Um, and uh, a, a similar razor called a, a double arrow or a golden arrow or something, and it was like a golden monkey or something. All the same thing, you know, all the same razor, essentially. They were around. Uh, there was a guy on a uh, shaving farm uh, who was pimping knees, and uh, he was dressing them up and hitting people for like 80 bucks for them or something like that. You know, not, not a bad mark up there. <laughs> you know, but he was putting a lot of work into it. You know, I like to get paid for my work too, so I'm not begrudging the guy. I'm just saying, you know, it's a $3 razor. Um, He was in the process of getting himself kicked off that forum because that owner, the owner of that forum and the mods were against these things. I don't know why you would be against them. Um, I don't know why you would be for them either, to be honest. I mean, outside of cheap. There were plenty of honed <clears throat> or easy to hone vintage razors that can be had for, you know, 30, 40, 60 bucks on the forums and sale privately and occasionally on eBay too. And it save you a whole lot of work. And you know, it's not like you're forging the razor, so the work that you put in, you're not really making anything. You know, you're saving something. You're wondering why I'm coming up a little bit. I, I sense that the bevel at the very toe is, uh, a little thicker than I wanted, so I'll put a little ugly wear on it just to get me through this job. And that's, you know, what this uh, video is about. 
this isn't about honing a gold dollar. It's not about restoring a gold dollar. It's not about modifying a gold dollar. It's just about, you know, pick one up, gold dollar, right? And, uh, you know, me picking one up and, and, and what I would do, you know, this is my approach to these things. I, uh, I, I don't have any emotional investment in it. I'm not in the uh, politically charged discussions with these things. Um, I, I, I get sick of hearing about them because the people that are like, I don't know what you would want to call pro gold dollar, but you know, the ones that are like really militant and, and aggressive, they, they kind of like, they're endless yammering. It makes me ill. <laughs> you know, it's just like, all right. <laughs> you know, like with vapors, all right, we get it. You vape. Yeah. Okay. We, we get it. You, you like gold dollars. Okay. Um, we, we got that. Um, everything else, you know, please. I don't want to hear it. Tell me what's so special about the razor. Tell me about like, you know, what you've run into. If you've honed hundreds of them, what's the, you know, what's the thing? I mean, there is no thing. If you want to know the truth, that's, <laughs> that's, um, another part of this video. It's like a read of, oh, they're so hard to, blah, 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 blah. they're not that hard to do anything with it. All it is is a poorly made razor, you know, um, it's not like a ball bearing that you have to like somehow figure out how to make it round because it came, you know, egg shaped. <laughs> it's just a razor, man. You know, um, some people use these to uh, you know, test hone with or test stones with, and I can get with that, but you know, at the same time, I can test hone with any number of blades I got on eBay for about 20, 30 bucks that. You know, they have some kind of history to them. And you know, I hate to say it, you know, I got to admit it, you know, that that historical thing, that like vintage thing, that that whole aesthetic, and that's important to me, you know. Uh, I'm sorry, but, you know, that's me. That's what I'm about. I'm in my kitchen right now. If I pan the camera around <clears throat> or I tipped it up or whatever, you'd see uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, um, cast iron frying pans from, you know, the late 1800s and the early 1900s that, you know, I bought, um, wherever and, uh, restored and use, right? Um, I also have all clad <laughs> and I like cooking on that too, but, uh, nothing for me, nothing beats cooking on a cast iron pan, you know, pain in the ass that it is, you know, a lot of maintenance got to pay attention to it. Got to oil it. Got to maintenance it. You know, same with these things, you know. When I look at my, uh, I have this big uh, frying pan up there. It's a number 11, uh, made by Erie. Um, Erie eventually became the Griswold Company. Anyway, um, I guess that's for another thread forum something um when i look at that i think about what was going on back then in the 1800s and you know what america was like and you know um <clears throat> you know what it was like for people to be out there cooking because like that was the pen there, there was no all clad there was no teflon there was no mcdonald's you know um that was it <laughs> What was that like? You know, I think about it and I like it. I don't have those feelings when I pick up my all clad pen and you know, I, I love those skillets too, but, um, and not everything here is all clad and vintage cast. There's some other stuff too. I'm just saying, you know, just making a drone an analogy, drawing a picture, feeling a little bit of roughness. And I think it's just me riding up really high on the, yeah, that's all it is. The problem I find with these blades, well, not a problem, but one thing I notice with them, for me to get the bevel set how I like it set, 
I usually wind up with a lot of spineware. Usually. And it's one thing to start off with an ugly gold dollar, but then to like also have it have a lot of spine where it's like, man, man, you know, fucking coming out of the gate with that. Um, they're not all like that, you know. I've, I've had one or two. Like I said, I've owned a, a lot of these things. Um, I've had a, a, a few, you know, uh, come out where... You know, the bevel was, uh, okay, you know, it looked like a new razor that had just been home. Um, <clears throat> instead of a razor that's been around for 40 or 50 years. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I have one with, like, you know, this big giant-ass bevel and this, like, shit ton of uh, spine wear. But uh, I take that, I've taken it away. I don't actually normally take any one razor. I have a bunch. And, when I travel, I just choose on mood, but I've taken that one on trips, and, um, I don't know, it works, you know, uh, they all work the same, um, I'm not the kind of guy to like, go after it and sort of dress it up, I mean, you know, the, the amount of manufacturing marks on this thing is, it's just ridiculous, right, um, there's a polish to it, because it's been, you know, hit on a buffing wheel, but, you know, there's all kinds of dings and dents and this and that. And, uh, yeah, th this is one of the older ones with the, uh, you see, with the stamping. Now they're laser etched, and that's supposed to be better for something. Um, less warps or whatever, but, ah, <laughs> I mean, seriously. <laughs> what else are you going to take away, you know? Um, one of the coolest things about a straight, I think, is the engraving and, and the tang and, <laughs> now manufacturers are like trying to tell me how much better it is to not have that. Um, anyway, so from this point forward, I'm just cleaning up the one camera. Um, from this point forward, uh, the honing is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, I'm not going to sit here and bore you to death while I spend another 20 minutes or whatever it's going to be. <clears throat> that one didn't go in the garbage, so whatever, 50-50. Um... <laughs> Um, I'm not going to bore you to death with the rest of the honing. Uh, it's all going to be straightforward, and, you know, I'm going to progress through on synths to, you know, like 5K, maybe 8K, I don't know. Um, 8K in Shapton is like 5K in Nani, so um, <clears throat> I might go there and then jump over to Naturals, but, uh, you know, when I'm done with this, you know, it's going to shave, you know, and um I'll get four or five solid shaves out of it, and then I'll like, this is my experience, I'll notice that, you know, something's off a little bit, and then a couple of more shaves, and I'll be like, nah, this is no good, and then maybe one more shave, and I'll be like, nah, this sucks, <laughs> and then I'll be back on the stones. Now, the good news is, is I don't have to go back to bevel set at that point. Um, I can drop down probably to the 3K and uh and then work my way back and if i catch it if i start the process of cleanup uh, earlier then uh, i don't have to go down as far so um that's with any blade so anyway look you know the blade's kind of cleaned up it's not too ugly i didn't put too much work into it really i didn't um the video is kind of long but it takes a long time to um you know take the pictures and the this and the that i'm probably going to take a shot of the spine show you where it hits and then it falls off um, and insert that into the video and so on and so forth um, just for the t sake of clarity so people know uh, what I'm talking about I know you guys that have like restored or whammied like a shit ton of these things probably think oh well what's he doing Isn't it? yeah but you gotta remember there's new people coming in all the time they're not always winding up in your forum or your inbox so I figured I'd uh, do this and throw this up there um, you know it's three bucks you know five bucks, whatever it is delivered, uh, you buy a handful of them, you know, and definitely buy a handful of them because out of like five or 10, one is jacked. Okay. Uh, one might not ever hone up correctly. Um, you might wind up doing something stupid and chipping the blade on another. So, you know, by the time you get done, if you get three or four solid, like, you know, beater razors out of it that you can keep in rotation, um, you know, you got something to, you know, rely on there and it costs you like I don't know, $15 if you have a Dremel 
Um, <clears throat> get the sanding disc. That's what I use to clean up the end. Practice on them. Yeah, the first couple that you do, you'll you'll tear them up. Um, you'll goof. You know, you'll you'll hit in here. You'll go right into the blade and this and that. So that's why you get a bunch of these. You know, and you screw some up, and then you get better. Um, I think that's probably the best asset or whatever it is. The best thing about a gold dollar, if you get like, you know, three, ten, whatever it is of these things and you work on them and you're doing all of that work you know and then you go and you get yourself an old Solinger or you get yourself an old Sheffield something that like you really want to shave with you really want to work on a nice old blade that you really want to show off and pimp and be like wow you know I mac this out and and it's badass uh, you'll have the tooling <laughs> experience under your belt and you'll be less liable to uh, you know, have uh, catastrophic errors, you know, it can still happen, you know, but uh, practice uh, helps get past that, you know. Um, so, anyway, that's my bit on a gold dollar for what it's worth, you know. Um, I'm not out there honing these up every week and then selling them or whatever. It's not my thing. I'm not into them. I'll probably shave with this five times and throw it in a drawer. I may hone it up one time after that and take it on a trip. I may give it away to somebody. Someone may buy a stone and wind up with it magically. It will show up in their box. You know, I don't know. Okay, I am not really that into these things. I just know that they're really popular, and uh, I thought making a video on them would be a good idea. Uh, hone whatever you want to. Hone it however you want to. Hone it on whatever you want to. Just get out there. Get honing. Have fun. and Enjoy yourself, man. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.